In studio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, two-star. Good morning again, Rob. Great to be here. Maria Lawrence, an all-star. Good morning. Or as Bill Stubblefield says, the star. The star. <laughs> I don't know is. about that. Bill? We, we all recognize that. We pay homage to her in the studio and outside the studio. i got to say, while you were out that week, Hornby closed with Maria. Maria was shining. I, she, yeah, and I was. my name was invoked a couple of times, and I was listening, Maria. I know you were. I know you were. She was shining, Bill. Like she a always, Hope Diamond. She always does, yeah. An uncut Hope Diamond. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I was. It was all... I was all in. I had all kinds of time. <laughs> <laughs> all kinds. Did you, did you use it correctly? I, I, I hope I did. Yeah, I hope you I did. did a good you job. really, you really did. You know what all Always kinds do. of time translates to, Bill? Stop, <laughs> yeah. stop interrupting me, Bill. Stop interrupting. It's my turn to talk. It's my turn. I, I have a follow up. <laughs> Wait, that means I'm never getting in when he has a follow up. You got to get sharper elbows, man. That's right. You That's right. Butt your way in there. It's all good. Our guest in this segment, uh, one on the phone, one in studio, the president of the Berkeley County Board of Education, Jackie Long. Jacqueline, good to see you. Good morning. It's Thanks a pleasure for coming to be in. here. And I hope I can get a morning. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, don't worry. <laughs> and via telephone, Damon Wright from the BOE. Damon, good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, Damon, how many years have you been on the board now? How long has this cycle been? Uh, feels like 15, <laughs> but <laughs> actually this is my third. Third year on the board. And, and it's a yeah. four-year seat? Yes. Yes. For you? Oh, so next election cycle, you have to run again. Maybe. Maybe. Will Will you run again? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I, I always tell my wife, I said, uh, the fall of my last year, is, I'll, ma- I'll make a decision then. Do, so. do you have any eyesights on uh, other offices, or is it Oh, uh, no, just, no, no. I see. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I actually, I, I can't, couldn't even run for uh, any other office unless it's... Uh, Nonpartisan, anyway, because of my my day job. That's true. Yeah, that's I forgot about that. And uh, Jackie, for you, how many different years have you served on the board? Uh, this is my third year in this term, and then I served eighteen months, I think it was, uh, filling out a leave of uh, not a leave of absence, not, uh, when Doctor Queen left. Right. So. Uh, however long that is. Uh huh. Okay. And since I work for the board, um, it just seems like. Forever, you just roll so, right in roll from right one in. thing yeah. to the other. I I retired, but I kind of didn't retire. So All right. can't hey, get it out of your system. I want to ask you first because this is a, a movement that's uh, hit a lot of different states around the country, and the school where I coach football in Maryland, uh, same rule also, and this is the cell phone ban and how that's gone so far in the Berkeley County school system. And Jackie, we'll start with you first. Uh, it's been extremely pleasing uh we have had no pushback um parents are in seems to be and uh even students i think if dr Sachs might have said on here one day or he will that he met with a group of students at martinsburg high school about 30 or 35 of them and uh, some of them said uh, it's the first time in a long time that they've been able to engage with each other because um, like in between class or whenever they would have time in a class, they would get their phone out and start getting on it, and now they're talking with each other. Mm-hmm. So it's been a good thing. Damon? Uh, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's been much better than what I anticipated. I thought we would get a lot more pushback. Uh, I think there, there's still some you know, kinks to work out, like you know, how to police the hallways and things like that. But overall, I think it's, it's been very positive, and um, I'm hoping that this will be an opportunity, like Jackie said, for students to talk to one another, get to know each one, one another, but most, most importantly, pay attention to the teachers and the staff to learn and to improve uh, their education. So, uh, and I've heard the same positive aspects of this cell phone policy that's gone into effect this year. Do any regrets that this wasn't enacted earlier and, and what made this year the unique year that you decided we got to go ahead and do this? Well, Damon, I don't know. I'm just going to go ahead. Yeah. I told, I told you ahead you of time, just do you just have to butt in with me? Cause I'll just keep talking. Um, I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, Bill shot you a look there, Maria. We got it on camera. I think it's something that maybe we should have initiated a year or two ago, um, but it was, we we just didn't do it because the timing wasn't right. And then this board was just adamant about we need to 
And the principals were, most of them, the majority of them were adamant about it also. And they are, the, <clears throat> with our um, initiation and definitely with some of them, um, we felt the time was right. So, But you were not the only one in the state. There is a movement to this. Ohio County did the same thing. I think other counties as well. So what made this unique throughout the state with several schools? Well, I, I think Ohio County did it first, but we had really discussed it early. Well, but my point is, what what has changed that the several school districts throughout the state are recognizing the need for a ban? I, to me, it, it would be, I mean, look at our test scores around the state. You can tell students are immersed in something else besides academics sometimes, I feel like they are. And um, that maybe they're on their iPads, iPhones, um, technology, maybe a little too much. And I think this was the time that we think they need to get back to the basics of maybe a little bit where we started from years ago. I often wonder if, um, if this is going to be just wonderful and lauded by everyone until there's an incident where and then parents sort of go crazy because they haven't they don't have the opportunity to be in touch with their um, with their child you know God forbid that we ever have a shooter or anything like that um, in one of our schools and then that would be the time that people would be like well we didn't get the information out but I do think that the you know, that the school system as a whole is really doing due diligence to make that happen without, you know, without you individually talking to your child. Um, but some parents, that's just not, it's not good enough. Is Damon to weigh in there too, Damon? <clears throat> yeah, I think you, you, we're never going to please everyone, uh, even when we first thought about this and talked about it. I, I think even before it was brought before the board, I just put up a comment on my board page and just asked, hey, if we consider this, and there was a lot of uh, feedback on that, that, you know, don't do this, that'd be terrible, I, I'm not going to listen, et cetera. Um, thankfully, that doesn't seem to have occurred now that it's been enacted. I think um, some of that I, was students, too, Damon. No, no, these were parents. Yeah, but <laughs> I saw parents. some students on there. Oh, also. yeah, 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 but yeah. Mo mostly Most of them. I heard from parents and even some staff, so uh, I think it's it's just to try to get everybody refocused. That's, that's the main thing. Um, and yes, if there is some type of uh, event that occurs, like we've seen in other places, uh, God forbid it does happen, the cell phones can, can be a blessing, but they can also be a curse in those situations because as we see on Facebook and other places, a lot of misinformation goes out there. And if you have a bunch of parents rushing to a scene, then how is law enforcement, emergency personnel, and everyone else supposed to adequately respond in, in a timely fashion and amongst the chaos. So as a parent and as, like I said, my grandson's in the schools, I, I want to be there and I want to know what's going on, but I also don't want to get in the way that would cause him more, more harm. Me going there could delay personnel getting there and saving his life. Yeah, I totally so I have agree. To also think about it that way. Yeah. I, I'll give you an example of uh, a teacher uh, – told Mr. Murphy and I one day when we were coming out of the board office and we were we asked her about that and she said well I'll give you a prime example of how cell phones affect my classroom she said one day I was teaching and a student's cell phone rang and he looked at her like <laughs> and it kept ringing and ringing and she said answer it so he answered it and she took it and she told the person he is in class. Do you not realize that? It was his mother. And she's, well, I need to tell him something. She said, well, how would you have told him before he could have his cell phone? I would have called the office. And she said, well, I suggest you do that now um, because he can't talk. So she hung up. Well, the parent called back. And it was actually really nothing. She just wanted to tell him something. So the, it's things like that that interrupt the classroom during the day. Yeah, we don't That's need needless. That. It's yeah. needless. It is completely needless because we went through 200 years of public education without <laughs> that even being possible, and yet we all figured out a way to communicate with each yes. other. 
Yeah. Uh, Damon, uh, you and Jackie both have mentioned uh, uh, an event. We had an event in Georgia this past week, uh, another school shooting. Are you comfortable that we have done as much in our school systems as we could do to prevent a Georgia, Georgia-like Georgia um, event? Um, I think there's always more that we can do. I know we just recently had a meeting, just the last board meeting, with uh, some of the SROs and SROs. SSOs that we're, we're hiring or have hired uh, to secure our schools and to patrol our schools. Um, but school shootings are, are there's a part we play, but I think it's as a nation we haven't done enough. That's We need to do more as a nation to com- combat this cycle that continues to happen. Um, so the schools can do as much, only so much, but as an, if we don't do anything as a nation, it, it's not going to we're not going to have the impact we'd like to have. And, and you're talking about as a nation, uh, some uh, uh, gun control throughout the country. Is that what you're talking about? Um, better gun control laws, better mental health laws, <clears throat> looking into uh, the whys and getting into, you know, getting more in-depth as to why these things are happening and more infrequently and why it's only certain groups and et cetera, et cetera, just continue down that path. Um, there are things that we can put in place as a nation that don't take a – I'm not talking about taking people's guns – but it's it's being responsible with the with the guns that we own. So we had an incident then at Martinsburg, well, not at Martinsburg High School, not at the Martinsburg High School football game, but adjacent to um, that clearly had an impact um, of someone um, who had a gun. Do you, both of you, do you feel as if the security checks coming into events like that um, are adequate? I mean, are people checking bags? Are they checking backpacks as they do? And what about when a child goes into school? Is Are the SROs checking every kid with every backpack? Um, and do we have to get to that point? Well, first let me say, uh, as safe as I think our schools are, I don't think we can ever let our guard down, and we have to keep working and working and working on what the next best thing is to keep our children and our schools secure. Um, I think the situation at, uh, on Raleigh and Berry Street that affected Martinsburg High School's game was handled very well. Um, did they check backpacks and hats and coats and gloves or whatever? We're not to that point yet. But um, no, we don't do that. Do we wand them down? No, we don't do that. The only place, I think the high schools now can wand down uh, students. They have wands. We've purchased them. Um, So if they feel there's um, somebody that they suspect might have something on them, then they can do that. But are you asking me if we're going to go to that? Um, Those are things that we have to discuss as a board and with our SROs and our law enforcement, whether we think we need to get to that point. I yeah. saw that Martinsburg High School initiated uh, no no backpacks. You raised an interesting point, Jackie, with the wands. That you said if there's someone you think that sh- they should use a wand on, uh, can are you permitted to be selective, or if you wand, do you have to wand everybody? I, from what I understand, and Damon can chime in here. If you is there a, if there are suspe- suspect of a student carrying something that is illegal or not permitted in the school, it's my understanding that you can wand them. So you can be selective. Okay. Yeah. Damon? You th- right, yes, you can be selective because um, a, there may be something, you know, about that will that harm everyone. Or, you know, yeah. yeah, so there may be something bulging out of their pockets or whatever it is, um, so then they would wand that person. It's the same for if, they're, if we thought they had a controlled substance or yes. something like that. Because the students still have, have certain rights, and you can't just go... Yeah. stop and frisk all the students but you you if there's something suspected then you can do as much as you can legally and just like searching a locker y- you know right. in response to the recent banning of backpacks policy that came down this week from martinsburg high school you mentioned it earlier jackie we got the information about it earlier this week too is that in direct response to the incident friday night or is there something else that took place that uh, triggered this and I assume the principal makes that decision. Does he have to consult with the superintendent and or the Board of Education when that decision is made? 
Um, you'd have to ask Trent Sherman, the principal, if um, you know why he made that decision. I'm sure he and Dr. Sachs um, talked about that and if it was the right thing to do, but I think the decision was ultimately his. So, Damon, it sounds like Jackie's saying you folks are not involved in that discussion. No, we don't make no, any decisions no. on the school level. That's not what we do. It is, it's, it's on the school level, of course, but it's, it's also a fairly big decision about banning backpacks. Yeah. Which it seems most kids at least used to carry, right? Mm-hmm. Banning back, yeah, still, yeah, well, whatever happened to carrying books that. in your arms? I mean, <laughs> well, do they have books anymore? Is there, is, well, is yeah. What do they have to carry in their backpack? Vaping materials. Yeah. Guess, <laughs> so. I'm not going there, uh, Rob. That's a show for you. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, well, anyway, uh, in regards to that, so that goes straight from the principal to the superintendent's office. The board of education is not involved in that. Will that become a discussion point for you? Will you? call the principal in and say why did you feel this decision was necessary or is it history to you already no i uh, you know you, we have some excellent principals that make good decisions and um i, I wouldn't uh, override his decision on that i'm not I asking mean, to override but i'd be if i was you i'd be curious as to why we made was is this directly re because of the shooting or is there something else i'd be curious about that well and i'll find out about that I appreciate that. Yeah. And you can tell me. Yeah, I'll let him know because yeah. he wants to know. I do. I actually do want to know. Inquiring minds want to know, so I'm sure they're probably TikToking on now, if it, right now. If it were a countywide, um, if this were something that all principals decided, or uh, would that come before the board then? Or again, is it a school by school and then? somebody administratively says yeah that's what we're going to do in all all of the high schools in berkeley county in my opinion if it was countywide I'm, it's something it's not something that the board has to make a decision on but i think it, it definitely would come to the board damon how do you feel about that it would probably come to the board i mean but if if the other three high schools want to do the same thing then they can certainly do that i guess they just have to work out the kinks in terms of okay if backpacks aren't allowed what about the, the athletes coming there what about visitors and you know whatever yeah. how you're gonna how you basically gonna how you're gonna handle that but uh, that would be up to the school to decide the best way to handle that for the safety of everyone so well, and i would think it would come to us as an information piece not maybe something right. that we need to vote on at the end of this week we'll be i think a month into the school year right for about yes. four, four straight weeks of attending classes what do you know about north middle at this point and what have you heard from the state of anything north middle is actually going very well you know they started um right away when they were put on that improvement plan mm -hmm. and uh worked hard this summer um we have a different principal there now uh the state was in the state's in there frequently. The state was in there. There's a, a one individual that works with the school um, every week or every couple of days. And then there is a facilitator that's placed there for 90 days. Um, that was Physically a, in the school daily? Yes. Uh, I don't know if it's daily, but she's she's in there. She has a 90-day contract. Um, and we met with um, the gentleman from uh, Mr. Kelly from the Department of Ed gave Dr. Sachs and Melissa and I an update of how he felt things were going there, and he said that they're going well. Of course, it's uh, early in the year, uh, but as he peeked in classrooms and spoke with teachers, there was a lot of uh, um, academics going on, a lot of teachers and students conversing about the subject, no kids in the hall. Um, that's big. So, yeah, that's big. I'm very pleased. Damon? Yeah, the, from the last report, it said that things are so far so good, and I'm, I'm pleased to hear the progress that we're making there. Um, and to continue that progress, and even in the feeder schools that are going to North so that um, things can move forward. I know the, the last test scores we got, it, things did tick up across the county. Um, wasn't huge, but it, but any progress going up in the test scores is, 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 is good in my opinion. Yeah. How in the loop are you folks on North Middle on a regular basis? Uh, Dr. Sex is good about uh, keeping us abreast of everything, um, definitely including North Middle. 
Yeah, as a clarification, our Facebook comment said that the backpack ban was only for athletic events. Yes, it is. Okay. It's not for... That was that no. was not clear in our earlier discussion. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Right, but, and, but I'm assuming, though, the, I'm looking for a clarification, is that a direct result of the shooting? Is that the yeah, I don't know, cause but, and effect yeah. of the shooting that took place outside the stadium? Right. All right, very good. Hey, I've got uh, about four minutes left uh, in, in this segment here. Really? Jackie, yes. <laughs> I know you were thinking that it was already over, but you still have four more minutes of grilling. No, I was – I didn't know. You never tell me how long I'm going to be on here. I just – I didn't tell you there was only a half an hour no. segment. Were you thinking a whole hour? I didn't know. But, uh, whatever. But you came prepared. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't break. I didn't brace Damon with that because I thought he might chicken out and not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he's, well, Damon's at work. This is uh, yeah, exactly. My lunch break, so. Yeah. so he would take his whole lunch hour. He if we had an hour. Eat faster in the next yeah. uh, lunch hour yeah. that he gets there, right? Yes. All right. Very good. Hey, in regards to the uh, Third Grade Success Act, okay, did you were you able to hire enough aides in the classrooms for the school year, and what are you observing so far? Um, well, we still have uh, fifteen aides that jobs that we can't fill. So, mm-hmm. um, so what's happening in in lieu of those people not being there? What happens? Uh, well, we try to put substitutes in there if we can. Or some some of those positions have an aide in the class, and maybe they need two. So, you know, you have one doing double duty. But um, we do the best we can to try to cover those classes because those people are needed. So, what, what grades all have the legislative-provided aides? First and second. And, and the, the ECATs. Is, the, is next year third grade? Yes. So then it's the full complement yeah. of, of, of uh, aides in the classroom? Yeah. And is that one aid per classroom, or do they bounce? Um, you know, we can use them how we need them, but they, they should be per classroom. And is it uh, are these folks, I know it's all the same pot of money ultimately, but are, is, are they state funded separately from the Berkeley County education budget, or does it all become part of your budget? No, it becomes, you know, those positions, they're positions that, on the, uh, that will be on the certified list that we get dollars back for them from the state okay but that's always a year behind so do you have some classrooms where there could be aids but you can't hire a person or provide a person to fill that classroom you mean in the first second or third grade Mm -hmm. oh i'm sure that's probably where some of these 15 aids are i i suspect that most of them are in special needs because those people go from special education into the first second or um, first and second positions or kindergarten or pre-K, so I suspect they've come out of the special education classrooms. Is are any of these positions uh, a position that a parent volunteer could fill temporarily if they might have been a teacher previously? They could if they apply and are hired. Would you have to have been a teacher previously to do this? No. So anybody could apply. Yes, okay. you have to have a high school education, and for the ECATS, um, you know, you have to be eventually be certified so you take those courses period along the way to get your certification ecat's been what uh early childhood classroom teaching assistants bill everybody knows that <laughs> yeah everybody Sorry. knows that <laughs> yeah so jackie some of the conversation here is about the public comment um piece of board meeting so is it the the board's decision not to respond to someone who comes up and is talking about something in terms of the public comment, or um, it is that just across the board? Because it looks like Donna Joy said they don't, you know, somebody makes a public comment, boom, that's it. You just listen. 30 seconds, yes? 30 seconds to respond. Um, I'll try to do that rapidly. Um, across the state, I that's my understanding, and that's, that's the way the Citizens Forum has uh, come about. Now, Mr. Murphy initiated that law when he was in Charleston. So um, the the issue is that we don't comment there, but we do have someone reach out to those individuals afterwards and meet with them, talk with them, find exactly out what their problem is. So it's not like no one responds. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Damon, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Damon. Oh, Berkeley County. Yeah, and congrats to Brian Hyatt and Julia Dobson, who are for state awards. Oh. Yeah. Very good. 